I'm here to share with you how I exercise mindfulness in my life. And I'll be referring to content from this book. It's called Mindfulness, A Practical Guide in a Frantic World, written by Mark Williams and Danny Penman. It's an eight weeks program, and I'll just give you a flavor of it. Now, mindfulness means is trying to be present, try to be aware without judgment and self-criticism. And it's actually a practice therapeutic technique. So I'm not coming up with things, yeah? And what triggered mindfulness is the spiral in our mid-modern world where mental health and mental wellness is constantly <coughs> challenged, where we see numbers of more and more people getting depressed and anxiety. In the past, it was common with old age. Now it covers all different ages and spectrums. So the first step is for us to identify the autopilot mind and the consciously aware mind. Now, what's an autopilot mind? Do you do regular tasks without thinking them through? Do you do them with no joy? Do you find yourself sleeping less? Do you drive from point A to B without realizing how did I get there? Of course, that was yours truly at the beginning of my speech. So first thing, and I'll need you all to be a little bit patient. The room is quite congested. And I'll ask Rajesh. Oh, wow, best location. <laughs> <laughs> so what we'll do is I'll be so I need you all to please take two pieces of chocolate. Only? Yeah? <laughs> yes, only. Um, I have full view. Also, I apologize to those in the back. If someone was distributing chocolate and I'm sitting at the back, I'll be very angry. Because I know my options will be less. <laughs> so please do not take it personally. I'm just trying to manage the logistics. Yeah? So please take two pieces of chocolate. Do not eat them unless it's <laughs> <laughs> Do not eat them until I tell you, and I'll tell you how, because there is a purpose behind it. Also, I do enjoy telling people what to do, because most of the time I'm told what to do. <laughs> right. Now what we will do with chocolate is something very interesting. We will actually start to meditate with chocolate. And I want you to eat one piece right now. Eat one piece of chocolate. <laughs> Yeah? I knew you'd ask this question actually. Nobody will take a two. I'm taking photos also. <laughs> right. I remember the purpose is to know what's the autopilot mind and what's a conscious mind. Right. Uh, by the way, is my voice audible to people back there? Because I'm small, so my lungs are quite small, and <laughs> my voice goes down. Right, thank you. Right, the chocolate that has been left is not free for distribution. I'll give people I like. <laughs> I'm joking. Right, so now you ate the first piece of chocolate. Now you eat the second, but follow my orders. I want you to hold the chocolate. I want you to look at the glowing wrap, feel the texture, listen, yes, you can improvise, no issue. I want you to open it please, open it slowly, Madame Postmaster teacher doesn't eat this brand of chocolate, otherwise she would know it's I know it's not there, on the center, yeah. Please smell the chocolate, but don't shove it over your nose. Just smell, take a look. I don't want any injury. Smell the chocolate. Now, put the chocolate in your mouth. Great. Keep the piece of chocolate there. Hold it. Guys, I, you love chocolate way too much. Hold it. Now, I want you to remember the first time 
and this time. When your mind wanders where you think, I need to be home, I have a table topic contest, I need to go, bring your mind back to the piece of chopping and enjoy it. This is how you move from an autopilot mode to unconscious aware mode. You always try and drag yourself to the present. So this is what is called the chocolate meditation. I did not get it. Can I spread it? the word? Mm -hmm. Sorry? I did not get it. Can <laughs> <laughs> right. right. Now, what we did here is clear. I'm taking you to the second step. Happiness <laughs> is doing the same thing, but with a different lens. So for a week, Every day, I want you to stop and think of 10 things that made you happy at that day. Okay, so I'll say mine. Yesterday, I wore new shoes. Neda, my baby sister, started her new job. She's very happy and excited. Meshed, my elder sister, came from travel. Meshed was sick which puts me in crisis mode because she's the serious one and more stable. She recovered. <coughs> my mother rediscovered her passion towards cooking. So every weekend she does a new dish and she gets it right from the start. I cannot do that. I found a nice mug which has a cow on it and a keyboard. I don't understand what the mug means, but I think it's lovely. <laughs> I made my grandmother laugh. I went to a wedding, that's why you see panda eyes here. <laughs> I drank uh, ice, no, it was hot pink latte for some reason. I met old friends in the wedding. I slept at one and woke up at six, which is amazing. Now when I remember these things, and when you do these things in a week's time every day, just remember 10 things that make you happy. I want you to feel how your body changes. So with me, I get these tingly goosebumps. My cheeks, they become rosy. I know you cannot see any cheeks, but I, I like to tell myself I have rosy cheeks, so I'll believe I have rosy cheeks. And that's what happiness and being present means to me. Now the third step, and again, the book is quite long. I'm just giving you bits and pieces is I want you to pick something you do every day. Something normal. Tying your shoelace, wearing your tie neck, wearing your hijab, walking from one room to the other. For me, it was brushing my teeth. <laughs> my brushing my teeth is very funny to you. <laughs> I'll video record it and send it to you. So for me, it's brushing my teeth because I have a habit. When I brush my teeth, I walk in circles. I don't know why. So I try and stop, and I brush quietly. I try and brush the right way, which is circular motion, not upwards, like a, trying to remove my gums. And I just look at myself quietly. It brings me back to the present. And this is how we do everything. And the beautiful thing about change is, if you start big and you aim big, you might not get there. But if you start small bits and pieces, the mind is powerful enough to take you there. So this is an exercise around happiness. Trust me, I cannot take you through all of the content, but just doing these three have transformed me greatly. And I encourage you all to join. Now, one important thing I do whenever I change is always do it with a friend. Don't do it alone. We live in a digital age. DTM Girish WhatsApps me all the time <laughs> about speeches when I'm going to do them, which is the 11th happiness <laughs> I have in my 10 courses of happiness. And the Prophet has a nice saying, which, uh, sorry, I will try and explain to my best, is that good companionship and bad companionship are like a piece of coal where bad companionship can you know, rub on you, and good companionship is like musk, a pleasant perfume, where uh, the aroma covers you. So when you pick the right people, 
you take a journey with them towards mindfulness, that's when you see change. And always remember, now I'm trying to be mindful. Always remember that the present is what makes us. We cannot do much about the past or the future. And happiness is just looking at things at a different lens. Make a choice to be human and not to be possessed. Back to you, Toastmaster.